Hello, my name is Tom Myers, and I'm the principal shareholder in T.A. Myers & Co., a forensic accounting group that specializes in investigating complex financial fraud. In order to understand the Goldman Sachs Abacus Synthetic CDO transaction, it's first necessary to be familiar with the concept of a credit default swap. A credit default swap or CDS, is simply a fancy name for an insurance contract between one investor, or counterparty, that seeks protection from the decline in value of a particular reference entity, for example a bond, and another counterparty that is willing to provide such protection in exchange for insurance premiums to be paid by the counterparty seeking the protection. The position of the protection seller is analogous to an investor who purchases the bond and receives an income stream in the form of interest, but instead of interest, the investor receives premiums from the protection buyer. The protection buyer will realize a gain on the CDS transaction if the recoveries, that is the payments for the declines in value, due to the occurrence of credit events, or defaults, exceed the amount of premiums the protection buyer pays. Since the protection buyer makes money if the reference entity defaults, it's said to have shorted the reference entity. Conversely, the protection seller is said to have a long position with respect to the reference entity. A simple analogy with the selling of insurance protection on a building worth a million dollars may be helpful. Suppose Counterparty A, who owns the building, desires to purchase fire and hazard insurance protection. Counterparty B is willing to sell the insurance protection for an agreed upon premium amount, say 1% of $1 million or $10,000 per year. If the building burns down and the recovery amount is $350,000, then Counterparty B will have to pay Counterparty A $650,000. If, on the other hand, there are no loss events, Counterparty B will be able to pocket the $10,000 annual premium for as long as the policy is in effect. A credit default swap with bonds or securities as a reference entity or group of reference entities works in a similar fashion. Put simply, the credit default swap contract represents a transaction where the counterparties make opposite bets on how the reference entity or entities will perform. The shorting counterparty makes money if the referenced entity defaults and goes down in value, while the protection seller, that is the party taking the long position, must cover the amount lost by the buyer of protection. But again, if there are no losses due to credit events, the protection seller pockets the premiums without ever having to make payments to the protection buyer. Clearly, the interests of the protection buyer and the protection seller are opposite. Given the choice, the protection sellers, that is the investors, would like to have a reference entity or entities with solid credit worthiness so that the possibility of default, also known as a credit event, is extremely remote. This is the position of the holders of debt and equity issued by a synthetic CDO. However, this position conflicts with the position of the deal sponsor, who is the buyer of protection and who will only get compensated, often enormously, if the reference entity defaults. A synthetic CDO, such as the Goldman Abacus deal, which has been attacked by the SEC, is, in essence, a credit default swap embedded in an offshore special purpose vehicle that issues various tranches of debt graded by risk level. During the pre-credit crunch era, the sponsor or arranger of a synthetic CDO was typically an investment banker, which also functioned as the buyer of credit protection on a portfolio of reference entities while the investor, often a pension or hedge fund, was a seller of protection. Synthetic CDOs, which were sponsored to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars,
sold by various Wall Street bankers often resulted in huge losses to the pension or hedge fund investors while they garnered massive profits for their investment bank sponsors who had shorted the reference portfolios as counterparty to the underlying credit default swap. If the protection buyer, that'd be the deal sponsor, is allowed to choose the reference entity or entities, it will logically select a reference entity, for example a bond, that's likely to default. Therein lies the fundamental conflict of interest in synthetic CDOs, such as the Goldman Abacus deal, which is the subject of the Securities and Exchange Commission lawsuit. This is a problem because many of the pre-credit crunch sponsors of synthetic CDOs were also large originators and or purchasers of abysmally underwritten subprime mortgages that were subsequently packaged by those bankers into toxic residential mortgage-backed securities. By 2006, many of these investment bankers were saddled with the same toxic assets on their balance sheets. A perfect solution was to market a synthetic CDO product with toxic reference entities that were on the sponsor's or a related party's balance sheet. The sponsor of the synthetic CDO would purchase protection from losses on assets it was exposed to by marketing the CDO to unsuspecting investors who were willing to sell such protection. Of course, a conflict exists where the sponsor investment banker doesn't disclose that it actually is hoping that the reference entities and therefore its investors lose money. Such a dynamic is at the heart of litigation involving synthetic CDOs. A sponsor or arranger of a synthetic CDO, such as Goldman's Abacus, puts a deal together using a special purpose vehicle, SPV, and among other things is responsible for hiring the portfolio manager and attracting investors. The Investors in a synthetic CDO deal, such as Goldman's Abacus, take the long position on the reference entities selected by the investment advisor and sell protection on the deal, while the sponsor, Goldman, in the case of Abacus, takes the short position as the counterparty buying protection. Ironically, the sponsor, who must obtain investors for the deal, only makes money if those investors lose money. A deal sponsor will benefit from reference entities that perform poorly, while the investors will lose in that situation. Hence the importance of an objective, unbiased process for selecting the reference entities. Ideally, the investment advisor, who is charged with the responsibility for objectively selecting the reference entities, is independent of the deal sponsor. However, allegations and common sense imply that this will not always or, or hardly ever be the case. This is especially true because the sponsor sets up the deal initially and arranges to engage the investment advisor. There are many different hats that an investment banker sponsor typically wears in a synthetic CDO deal. Those different roles often engender conflicts of interest. For more detail into some of the conflicts and wrongdoing alleged in the Goldman Abacus synthetic CDO transaction by the SEC, click on the following link. If after reviewing this material you have further questions, just send us an email and we'll respond. Thank you.